in the summer of 67, after working in the migraine clinic for a year, I went back to England for a holiday and to my own great surprise, proceeded to write a book on migraine over the course of a couple of weeks. It, it spilled out suddenly without conscious planning. I sent a telegram to Friedman from London saying that somehow or other a book had just gushed out and that I'd taken it to Faber and Faber, a British publisher. They'd published a book of my mother's and that they were interested in publishing it. I hoped Friedman might like the book and write a foreword, perhaps. He sent a return telegram saying, stop, hold everything. When I came back to New York, Friedman did not look at all friendly. He looked rather disturbed. And he almost tore the manuscript of the book out of my hands. Who did I think I was to write a book on migraine, he demanded. What presumption. I said, I'm sorry, it just happened. He said that he would send the manuscript out for review to someone very high up in the migraine world. I was very taken aback by these reactions. A few days later, I saw Friedman's assistant photocopying my manuscript. Uh, I didn't pay much attention, but, but I noticed it. About three weeks later, Friedman gave me a letter from the reviewer from which all identifying characteristics of the sender had been removed. It was a letter lacking any real constructive critical substance but full of personal and often envenomed criticism of the book's style and its writer. When I said this to Friedman, he replied, on the contrary, he is absolutely right. This is what your book consists of. It's basically trash. He went on to say that he would not in future allow me access to any of my own notes on the patients I had seen, that everything would be locked up. He warned me not to think of going back to the book, saying that if I did, he would not only fire me, but see that I never got another neurological job in America. At that time, he was chairman of the headache section of the American Neurological Association, and it would indeed have been impossible for me to get another job without his recommendation. I mentioned Friedman's threats to my parents, hoping for their support. But my father, in what I felt was a rather cowardly way, said, you better not anger this man. He could ruin your life. So I suppressed my feelings for many months. These were among the worst months of my life. I continued seeing patients. And then finally, in June of 1968, I decided I could bear it no longer. I made an arrangement with the janitor to let me into the clinic at night. Between midnight and three in the morning, I would pull out my own notes and copy what I could laboriously by hand. I then told Friedman that I wanted to take a long holiday in London, and he immediately demanded, you going back to that book of yours? I said, I have to. It'll be the last thing you do, he said. <laughs>